You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everybody, back to Bible study. Amen. It always feels like so long, right? When we take that one Wednesday off, it's like, wow, it feels, feels like it's been such a long time since we've been here for Bible study. But just grateful to the Lord that we're able to be here today. Thank you for coming out today and joining us for for Bible study. Looking forward as today we start now Acts chapter 24. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, it's just amazing when you look at it. We only have about four more chapters from here. So this month we'll actually be going through chapter 24 and we'll be finishing in 25. So then we'll have only 26 to 28 after that. Wow. So, you know, we may finish that at the beginning of the year. Are we going to go back to Daniel? Uh, well, we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going we're gonna to see. I'm waiting to see where the Lord leads us. Yeah, no, I remember. You remember, too. So that's good. So I'm, I'm hoping we do, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right on chapter six. It was right on the revelation part, the visions part. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't get to that part. So I said, OK, Lord, we're going back to Acts. And, uh, you know, so we'll see. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to hopefully we do go back to that. So. That's a good. Uh, that's a good thing right there to pray. But definitely, we're going to need prayer for the Lord to bring that forth in a, in a way that we can, you know, that could be clear on that, you know. So, but definitely looking forward to that. So, yeah, we're getting close. So, Amen. <laughs> well, praise God. Well, thank you again for joining us today, and uh, we're going to open up in a word of prayer tonight, um, and uh, then we'll, we'll seek the Lord together. Amen. Sister Karen, do you mind opening us up in a word of prayer? This Father time? God, we've learned so much. Yes, of you through these lessons, Father yes, God. Things yes. that we apply in our everyday life, Father God. The life of Paul, Father God. The struggle that he had, Father God. And what an example, Father God, of a godly man. So thank you, Lord, for bringing this word out for, from the from the teachers here, Father God, because the word has been so good. You said, taste and see that it's good, and it's been good, Father yes, God. Lord so Jesus. we thank you, Father thank God, for the you, rain, Lord. Lord. Father, we thank yes. the people of God around safely, Father God. Yes. Lord, yes, we thank you for Jesus. protection over Miss Alma, over Matthew, Father God. Lord, yes, you are Lord you are great, Jesus. Father God. You are the great yes, shepherd, Father yes, God. You're Jesus the heir of the church, Father God. You're the, you're, you're, oh God, you're, I can't even say enough, thank Father God. You, Jesus, but I praise you, Lord. Bless him be tonight, Father God. Let it be Rama, Father God, to us, Lord. And thank you for the elections, Father God. Some of them did go the way maybe we wanted them to do, Father. But we know you have a purpose and a plan, Father God. Yes, and that Jesus. you choose, yes, Father God, the princes Lord and kings, Jesus. Father God. You put them in their stations, Father God. So we'll be satisfied, Lord, knowing, yes. Father God, in heaven, that yes, you see Jesus. everything. And we just see a little yes, tiny bit. So I thank you, Father God, for the elections, Lord. And so be it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Karen. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, thank you for leading us into that, actually, because this Friday, um, so we we did um, end the ministry classes for the year, um, but we will continue with our Friday night. So this Friday, we'll actually be having prayer. And I just wanted to share this scripture where we're kind of coming from. And it's actually taken from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. It says, here are my directions. Pray much for others, plead for God's mercy upon them, give thanks for all he is going to do for them. Pray in this way for kings and all others who are in authority over us or are in places of high responsibility so that we can live in peace and quietness, spending our time in godly living and thinking much about the Lord. Amen. So this will be a scripture that we'll be using this Friday night and as we're leading, you know, about the the Lord. But what I like about that is is how he says, you know, in that that translation, how when we pray and we give these things to God, it's like we're not burdening ourselves with all these things that could be so heavy upon our heart. Yeah, heaviness, right? But I like how it ends that and take our and use that time to be able to be thinking about our Lord. That is awesome. I was like, wow, Lord, that's something I want us to do together as a church, as people, to be able to come together in prayer. So we'll be doing that for the Friday nights for this month. Um, so this Friday, we'll be starting at 7 o'clock here in the Annex. We'll have some coffee going and, you know, different things like that. But we'll be meeting here in the Annex room for prayer, and we'll be doing that for the Fridays going forward for the end of the year. Yes, Brother AJ. What was it? Uh, oh, that was, um, let me see here. First Timothy. First Timothy. There we go. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Yeah, and I believe that was the Living Bible version that I read. I believe it was the Living Bible version, but it's it's uh, it's it's there. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll be praying and seeking the Lord on behalf of one another and others around us, and taking those times to just intercede and, and just seek the Lord. Amen. On behalf 
of our family on behalf of all those that will be meeting. You know, we know Thanksgiving is coming up and just, uh, you know, just this definitely this time of the season. Many times, many people are happy in this season, but there's also a lot of people that get really depressed in this season as well. You know, a lot of different things that go on, a lot of people, a lot of anxiety, stuff like that. So, you know, we're going to come together and pray, amen, and also for ourselves, amen, because we, we may fall in these areas and places many times. So, you know, we definitely want the Lord's hand upon us and to lead us and guide us, amen. amen. And what better way to do it knowing that we have a right standing relationship with a Heavenly amen. Father, amen. It's a good relationship with him. So just looking forward to that. And then uh, Sunday morning, uh, we have uh, prayer in the morning at 915. We are resuming in Psalm 119. So we'll continue in that coming up. I believe it's Psalm 119, verse 105. Um, we're starting there again. So we'll be we'll be uh, looking forward to that. And then our Sunday service, amen, 1045 service. Did you already do Zechariah in the morning? Zechariah? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Ooh, it's all coming together, right? <laughs> So I'm I'm looking to what what the Lord has next for us, but I'm I'm kind of going in the direction of Esther, because we've been in Love we've been in Ezra, Nehemiah, and I believe Esther may be the next Love one after Psalm 119. So oh, that's beautiful. you know, so I was like, okay, Lord, I'm, I was I was kind of liking that. I was like, all right, I was, I was wondering if we were going to do that, but we did three minor prophets in a row, though, right? Um, which ones? Like Hosea and all that. No. No. No, I don't believe so. Yeah, no, I don't believe so. We we've been doing the book of Ezra, and then we did Nehemiah. 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 Yeah, we did that one, but but I would love to get there though. I would love to get there. Nehemiah, Ezra, and did you do a third one? No, not yet. No. Yeah, Esther would probably be the third one in that series to kind of okay. come back together on that. So it'd be, it'd be kind of cool. <laughs> so we'll get there. Looking forward to it. Amen. And then uh, also, no, so not this Sunday, but the 20th, 1120, uh, we'll also be having a Thanksgiving potluck. So we're looking forward to that. That'll be on Sunday at 1045. And uh, we'll be meeting here in the annex room. So we will not be having service there in the sanctuary. We also will not be live streaming that day. Um, but feel, for those that watch us online and for everybody that comes, feel free to come on out with us that day. And uh, we'll be having some food and uh, just looking forward to what the Lord has prepared. Amen. So we'll be taking a sign-up sheet for anybody that would like to sign up for any side dishes, anything like that. The church will provide the turkeys and a couple of dishes there. And uh, But also but if you'd like to bring something, drinks, desserts, desserts, you know, desserts. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, I already told him he just came right now, so I gave him the info. So he's he knows that date. So he's already asked me about December, too. I said, I'll get you that date eventually because we are double dipping this year. We're doing Thanksgiving and we're still going to do one in December, amen. So, literally, really, really looking forward to that. So, just thankful to the Lord we're able to do so. Uh, no, no, that will be the service. Oh, that will be the service. Yes, that will be the service. So you know, we'll make sure make sure we come and we eat and we read the word of God. Definitely. 1045, you know? same time? Uh, yes, ten forty five. Yes, we'll keep it at ten forty five that day. So looking forward to that and that that'll be our, our fellowship and the day of coming together. Amen. And, and really where that comes from is a scripture that I'm reminded of, you know, when it says they were all meeting together day and night, you know, coming together and praying and, you know, but at the same time, they're breaking bread. Amen. So that's what I'm looking forward to is coming together and just breaking bread together and being able to. You know, but not only breaking bread, breaking some turkey, breaking some, you know, side, whatever you guys decide to bring. Amen. So looking forward to that. Well, praise God. Um, any any praise reports? Any it's like you know, shout out, anything just scripture that comes to mind, so you just like to share. There is a praise report. Matthew did get COVID over the weekend. He went to a car show in Las Vegas, but Valerie in summer did not get it. Oh wow. So that is a praise report. It's okay. backhanded, but it's still a praise report. And he's, he's doing okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. he's doing good. Amen. Praise yeah. God for that. Amen. Well, but praise. I'm just glad that because Valerie never stuck that stuff, mm. asthma stuff. So for her to be protected is beautiful. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good. We can give the Lord glory and praise on that, right? Amen. 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 <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Let me get ready. Okay, well, I got a praise report. I just want to thank the Lord for my, my beautiful wife, Letty. As today we celebrate 14 years of marriage today. So it's our anniversary today, wedding anniversary. So I'm just, <laughs> just grateful to the Lord that we've been able to. We've been together for 26 years now, but married for 14 years, you know. So just really, really grateful to the Lord and, and thankful for her. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out for that. Amen. Praise report. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. Well, um, yeah, that, that'll lead us into walking up, amen? So let's walk up, amen? It <laughs> should be teaching tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
<laughs> Amen. Well, that is a praise report. Absolutely. Worthy to give praise to God for it and thank the Lord for his goodness, his patience, his mercy, for his forgiveness in our relationship and our marriage. Yes. But that's also something we give thanks to him, too, to God, yes. because he's so merciful and gracious and forgiving and patient with us in our relationship with him. And that's something that we're working in and working on daily. So yes. thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So today we are going to continue with chapter 24 in the book of Acts. And the emphasis is cheerfully. <clears throat> so do I give a definition on cheerfully? Maybe, yes, okay. <laughs> yes? Yes. Just, just to start off, cheerfully, in a way that displays happiness or optimism, readily and willingly. So we're going to read was our, our fellow servant in Christ looking at this cheerfully with happiness or optimism. So based on what we're going to read, we'll, we'll make that conclusion and then we'll, we'll clarify it. So I'm going to start opening on verse 1. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down from Jerusalem to Caesarea with some elders and an attorney named Tertullus, or Tertullus, acting as a spokesman and consul. They presented to the governor their formal charges against Paul. After Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began the complaint against him, saying to the governor, Since through you we have obtained great peace, and since by your foresight reforms are being carried out for this nation... In every way and in every place, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with all gratitude. But so that I do not weary you with um, any further, I beg you to grant us by your kindness a brief hearing. For we have found this man to be a public menace and one who instigates dissension among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the heretical sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to desecrate the temple, but we took him into custody and we intended to judge him by our law. But Lysias and the commander, the commander came and with great force took him out of our hands and ordered his accusers to come before you. By interrogating him yourself concerning all these matters, you will be able to determine the truth about these things which we charge him. The Jews also joined in the attack, declaring and insisting that these things were so. When the governor nodded for him to speak, Paul answered, Knowing for many years you have been a judge over this nation, I make my defense cheerfully and with good courage. As you can easily verify, it has been no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. Neither in the temple nor in the synagogues or elsewhere in the city did they find me carrying on a discussion or disputing with anybody or causing a crowd to gather. Nor can they present evidence to you to prove what they know, what they now bring against me. So that's his defense, cheerfully. So you think he did it like with joy, with happiness, with optimism? No, he was ready. He was ready and he knows he's prepared with what he's going to answer. So cheerfully, it's that that's where we're going to focus on what, what we do cheerfully. But to know that we left off in our last teaching on him being held. And what was he held? Okay, we're, I'm going to read. So he was held in the in um, Harris Praetorium until this was going to take place. So we get ready to hear Paul's case. That's where we left off. So now this trial has come before Felix, before the governor. And what takes place seems, what we're going to read basically is just accusations, 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 accusations after accusation. And to see, is there going to be something out of truth of that? We know the facts, obviously, because we have the Bible, we have the word, we've been going to the study, and we see now what's been written. So what they're accusing him of, we know it didn't take place. All that stuff was made up, even like saying that we took him away, you know, because it, it was getting crazy. That's They can't even prove that because that didn't take place. And that we read back in history, too, in the book of um, chapter 21. But it's just these lies. Somebody prepared themselves to come against a court because they, they didn't just get anybody. If that name kind of strikes you like, hey, what, what is that word? Tertullus, Tertullus, it's pronounced Tertullus or Tertullus. You can call him Tully, which we can't call him Tully. <laughs> so this is where we're at. It, they were, but, you know, I was thinking about it. So this trial is it's coming to pass, and it took, it's, we're reading about it. 
and we think it's going to happen quickly, which you kind of think because everything's been happening fast. You know, he's, he's speaking. The Jews start a, a crowd, a riot. They confuse people. They get them. They pull them. They pull them to the barracks. And then they, they accuse them and they have them under guard. And everything's hap it's happening fast. This is happening fast, too. But in the process of this, I'm only going to share up to verse 13. But then there's going to be a halt because it's going to be like a pause. He's going to be held and imprisoned for a while. So it's like, okay, it's going fast. And all of a sudden, what? It's going to take two years because somebody has no, no proof, no evidence of what they're charging him. So let's go to Turtles. Okay, he brings up a, a wrongful accusation. And I don't like anything about this. Do you guys think this is fair? No. That they're coming together. It's not just one person. It's everyone. The sect. Yes. The, the leadership, the council, the Sanhedrin, the Jews. That, and they didn't just come alone because they know what they have is something big. And they want to cause something big because they want to pursue Paul's death. That's something that we read into that last time we were here. At all costs, they cursed themselves. They bound themselves to the point where we're not going to eat until we kill him. Not just he dies or someone kills him until we kill him. To have someone prepare to kill you, it's like, wow, really? Uh, it made me laugh a little here because it says, that he's causing dissensions among the Jews throughout the world. Really? <laughs> and the accusation too, against the Roman Empire. They're giving him a lot of credit that he's causing all of this problem, even across the entire Roman Empire. It's like, okay, come on, come on, something's happening right here. So, so what's gonna happen here? Okay, they, they, lawyered, they lawyered up, I said lawyered. They lawyered up, they hired Tertullus. That was their speech, their special legal counselor. Tertullus, is a common Greek name. He's Hellenistic Jew and Hellenistic related to Greek history, language, and they applied that lifestyle and philosophy and all that. We, In the beginning of Acts, we talked about it. It's just like a style, a form, a culture, and, and he went into that. But they chose him because of his expertise in Roman law and skill in public speaking. So he was a skilled lawyer. He fits the bill to bring the consul to the governor to gain favor for their consul. Mm -hmm. So they didn't just get anybody off the street. They knew who they were going to get. Somebody who knows the Roman law and somebody who prepared, who was prepared to go before public, before a court, before a governor. So that takes some courage to actually do that. But, you know, it didn't come in lightly. They knew what they were doing because he fit the bill. And you know what? They probably paid him well. So when someone pays you well, you're going to do your job. Unfortunately for right here, it's being done unjust. And I, I just, wonder if Turtles was there when that happened. It's, was he? Yeah, he's the one that's presenting the case. He's no, a lawyer that's it, coming to I the governor. He was there when that started with Paul, is what I meant by that. Yeah. Before he got. It's possible he knew. Yeah. Yeah. Because many times there's different um, men who were already like, okay, we're going to use him because he speaks, you know, well, he's eloquent. Because they said he's an orator, so he's a yeah. professional. Yeah professional and in his skill. So it's a good it's a good person to have for them, but unfortunately it's just the wrong cause, the wrong motive, the wrong people. But again, it's to gain favor and for their counsel, the, the everybody that's against him. Okay, so the charges that they bring up are false. We know that. So that's a hefty charge to be brought up because it's already something that we know it's untrue, something they can't prove. But what he does as a lawyer, think about like a courtroom, somebody, oh, I'm going to hire you because you're going to execute and you're going to do the job. And a lot of times, even talking like in real life, in real time, is that people get paid, you know, because you, even if you're right and you're standing for yourself and there's truth and there's proof to prove yourself or to prove a charge against someone, it all is it's up to the to the law, really, the courtroom. If there's going to be um, a jury, but the judges and a lot of people have, you know, speculation or they have their suspicions that people get paid off. I'm not going to get into that, but we know it probably happens. They just don't come up with these shows, or it just doesn't happen, and it's happening here in a court of law in this presentation that that they already know what they're going to get out of something, especially when they flatter 
we're reading so about someone right here who is coming like, oh, you know, we know who you are and, you know, you've caused, you know, you brought peace and you've like brought everybody together and your reign, not reign, but in every, in every place, most excellent, we acknowledge with gratitude that he's done a great job, which we know is not a fact. Yes. No, I just find it interesting that it says that Turtleus may have even been a Gentile lawyer. Yes. A professional Gentile lawyer. So to think about how the Jewish people were so against Gentiles, but yet when they needed a Gentile here, they hired this. So you're saying Turtleus was Gentile? It's believed that he may have been a, Jew, a, a Gentile lawyer. Interesting. So yeah, the hell was he Hellenistic there. Jew or a Gentile. It's like in between. They couldn't between, prove yeah. it, oh. but it makes sense that he could be either or. But yeah, it goes against what they're preaching and who they're hating. You know, it's not for the Gentiles, it's for us, but money talks and it goes to show their character. In our days, it's a smart Jewish lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> in our days now. <laughs> but see what happens here. It begins with flattery. <clears throat> but what, what, what do we get out of flattery? I mean, you, you think that Felix didn't know that they were coming to him and saying like, oh, you know, you, you're reigning well. You know, there's peace in your reign. In Felix's government and his, well, we're going to go into that. Okay, so they came with flattery, and that's something that we shouldn't do because I, we're going to go into some scriptures a little in a little bit about what happens with the with the lying tongue and flattery and going against your neighbor. And it's going to, with contrary to everything that these religious men need to stand by or should stand by or say they stand by because they believe the law and they follow the law. But they're unjust, and they're unjust, and they're working in evil with evil intent. So they're already working with injustice towards Paul. So we have this, like right here, we have the charge. This is their charge, and then we have Paul's defense. So what's going to win? There's going to be a pause after these scriptures, but what do you think is going to win? You know, or who is going to win this out? Paul had nothing to hide, and that's how he is able to pre present himself when. Felix gives them the, the motion to, to speak. I'm going to share my defense cheerfully with confidence. Yes. He has nothing to hide, and we know that. He has nothing to hide. So they use flattery. Turtleus uses flattery since it's contrary to the truth. This is their business as usual. Felix's administration was characterized by insurrections and unrest. Looking into in history, he had Jewish people killed. He was responsible for murders. He is not a good person. So by a turtle is saying, oh, you know, you caused peace and you're responsible for the peace and the land and all that, those are all lies. But this wasn't brought up like, hey, you're speaking well of me. It's like, no, he, he just took it because he's listening. So it's characterized by insurrections and arrest. Using flattery and compliment was bold. So he used this to make his case strong as his, towards his accusation towards Paul not only as a religious case, but also political. So this is where this is like important. It seems like, well, what's going on? Why they went to him and why they made it not just religious, because then they could work it out on themselves with the Jewish law. They made it political so Rome could get involved and they could act and they could do something about it. So Rome wasn't going to be about anybody trying to create a sect, create a new religion, to add new gods or, or interfere with the laws that they already made agreements with because a lot of the Jewish laws were already approved by Rome. So this, this would go contrary to it. So it's unfortunate that this is like right now what we live is that people mix religion with politics and stuff. And it's like, don't go there. Because when you bring your, your charges, there's going to be one to accuse you or there's going to be one to put you to shame. And that could happen to any of us, even when we like bring a charge against someone. Do we have proof? Do we have witnesses? At least in this case, there wasn't. They all conspired to lie. But for what gain? Now, the only thing that I can think about is the gain is for them, it doesn't end well. But God's word and his, it's still being fulfilled. Scripture is being fulfilled. And that's what we hold on to that in studying this and reading this, that the will of God is still, is still being fulfilled. So it's interesting. So this is a charge that they're bringing against him so that Rome could act and act immediately. They weren't just going to wait. They're going to pause everything and say, okay, you're coming against Rome? This is what we talk about or where I mentioned that he's causing trouble all over the world, <laughs> all over the Roman Empire, which it's not true. You guys believe that was true? I don't think so. <laughs> 
Okay, because they would see it as, um, I'm going to go into my notes. I'm, I'm going to read into the notes right here. So they saw it as a, not a dispute, but a threat to the Roman government. So seeing this and bringing this accusation about Paul, they already saw him as a violator of their law. And that's what they're hoping is going to land. Like, hey, he's coming against your empire, against your government, which is not true because we know what the Apostle Paul has been doing, sharing his faith, testifying about Jesus, the resurrection, about the ministry that he's calling them to, to share the good news and share salvation. That's what they hate. So we're going to find out that they hate him. But we already know they hate him. We're going to find out how much even more they hate him. We know that the Jews created trouble every time Paul was in town. And this is what they're accusing him. Oh, he's causing riots. He's causing trouble. He's, you know, people are rebelling. He's probably like you know, ringleader, being called a ringleader of a rebellion. It's like, dude, come on, what are you doing? But this is what they're doing. And in, as we're reading, this is what the Jews and the leaders would do. They confused, they brought confusion among the people. So people were angry. All these, these deaths and these beatings and all this took place because of their lies. Because of their lies, because they have evil in their heart, because they hate. Why do they hate them so much? Why is it that they're against truth? They're already in violation of God's law by causing this because them being followers and being believers and knowing the law, there are many scriptures in the Old Testament that attest to that, that you do not bring a false witness against yes. your neighbor. Don't bear false witness. Don't lie because there are charges against that. And even skills. Yes. And these are things that it's like, did they forget about this? But when I think when someone's driven and they already have evil, like purpose or just like, we're just going to go, I don't care about the consequences. They're not thinking about all that because in history and in, the, um, I'm not going to say spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert in the Bible, but Ananias gets killed by his own people eventually. So he's a wicked man acting in wicked ways, but it's unfortunate that they use, well, I'm a man of law. I'm a man of like composure. I, people respect me. People praise me. That's dangerous. When someone seeks praise, when someone wants attention, and when someone wants to be flattered, because we should already, we should not should be a red flag, like, eh, I don't know about that. What are you trying to get out of here or out of this? So going back to, they're the ones who started the riots, and they're the ones who, who changed their lives. And I say change their lives because when they talk about he tried to desecrate the temple, they had said that he desecrated the temple. Do they mean physically? Who's to say? Yeah, well, even though it, it's a lie, whatever reason that they're bringing, it's like he he's not there speaking against it or coming against it or what. Yes, you were talking about when, remember when they said that he brought a Gentile into the place? Oh, that's it. Like it was yeah. still holding on to that, that he had a Gentile in there. That's it. it, wasn't, that, it wasn't that's true. a great answer. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. And then it, it goes in, con well, not in contrary, but to what Pastor said that there in history, he could have been a Gentile lawyer, this guy who's bringing these accusations with them. So it's like, what are you talking about? But the proof that they're changing the, their accusation already, not only did he desecrate, right here it says he tried to desecrate in verse six. Yeah, they're already lying. So they're stirring up lies, confusion. But we know the facts. I, that's the point today. We know the facts. We know the truth. <laughs> we weren't there, but now we can read it in his defense and understand that, man, these things just conspire. But where are they going to land? I guess what we can learn from it is like, Lord, just cover me. You be the shield. You, you protect me spiritually and physically. You're my fortress. You're my shield, my defense. Last time it was like, he's the one that rescues us because he is our rescuer. When we walk uprightly with him, he is our shield and our defense. And he could put our his oil, anoint us with his oil. And what's going to happen? Those darts and those arrows are just going to maybe bounce back. You know, ricochet, bounce down, but not bounce down, but fall. And just be protected because the Lord is that good that he cares for us. And he fights for us. And he stands with us. And he's the one who fights our battles. Okay. So right here, these are all rumors. These never... These things never took place. So we know the facts. Their accusations and rumors. There was criminal profiling going on right here. Even as far as saying, like, he is from 
verse five, the end of five, the ringleader and ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So this lawyer prepared himself. He knew what to say because if he would have said, oh, he's a ringleader of the Christians, of the way of the new believers, then he would kind of put himself in a place where he's identifying that, oh, I know about Jesus and Christianity. So he went on a political, I guess, a legal form representing the sect of the Nazarenes. Why do you say that? You know that there's a scripture, specifically in John 1, there is one named Daniel when Jesus was calling out his disciples and this man said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So it's kind of offensive because we know who came from Nazareth. We know that Jesus grew up in Nazareth, but by him saying the sex of the Nazarenes was used for followers of Jesus, it was despised and a lonely place, a place of poor reputation. So it was an insult by saying he's a ringleader of. It's like, so they're doing it towards the Lord. So you see that all this is hate and anger towards the truth. It's just not unfortunate, but it just so happens that it's going towards a man. Yes. I guess in the sense that also calling out that like a neighborhood in a sense, like, oh, just because he's from Florida mm -hmm. Heights or Pico Rivera or something like that, it's like you're not only coming, you're coming against that whole group of people that's pretty messed up. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they're, they're discriminating. That's why I said like um, criminal profiling, but also religiously they are, they're being prejudiced. They're it's racism, like all this is taking place and it's like, okay, but they have pretty, I guess a pretty bold um, appearance to go before a governor and say all these things when they're all lies. And when we know that all this comes for the Lord to be glorified. And I brought up that scripture about um, Nathaniel asking, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because we know that the Lord answered him, but yes, something good does come out of Nazareth, peace hope, salvation, Jesus, the Christ comes out of Nazareth. But it's just one of those where people already see it like, mm, you know, that town, it's despised. We know that our Lord was despised in scripture. You know, he was put to shame, not regarded. And it's unfortunate. I guess that's the, the word that keeps coming. I guess, you know, how people say basically or because right now I'm saying unfortunate because there's so much else I could say, but I'm not going to say in like an upsetting word. It's just I don't mean upsetting like a bad word, just like to be angry about it, like, oh, like, yeah, they're lucky that this took place because I guess now we'd get all riled up and, oh, no, I'm going to start in this direction. No, I'm not. I'm not going to hurt anybody. You know, if, um, if you're being falsely accused, I could give you some advice. Get a lawyer. <laughs> if you're being falsely accused of a crime or oh, of what else? What else can you be accused of? Of lies? Get a lawyer. And that's in my notes for the end, but you guys know what, what, what lawyer I'm telling you to get. Get Jesus, the right counsel, the sound counsel, and he will fight for us and he stands for us. And he's the one that gives us a, the guidance to do the right thing. Not on our own, because we don't want to act on our behalf and our anger, because that could happen. If we let accusations, like if, if right now you're facing an accusation or somebody's coming up with something or trying to torture you or incriminate you, that's going to cause like a frustration and an anger and you're going to want to respond. But there are keys into not responding even though you want to. That's why I say, oh, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so can anything get come out of Nazareth? We do. We, we know that it can. So this lawyer, he made it clear to say a sect of the Nazarenes because he didn't want to identify. So and to ask Let's go right here. Okay, so that's that. That's what took place. And I was skipping off to my notes over here. So all these lies, all these things that they're bringing up, accusations, interrogating him. I specifically wrote a note here. I'm talking about um, when he asked Felix to examine him. Here? Yes, in verse 8. And ordered his accusers to come before you. So by interrogating him yourself concerning all these matters, you will be able to determine the truth about these things. So the lawyer is saying, okay, well, interrogate him. In old, in ancient trials, this man beat and torture. So to examine him, man, like beat him up. Um, yeah, it's not a just thing. It, it, interrogate him before they used to practice more violence. It's just they're going to beat him up or they're going to torture him. And most likely that was a, the plea, like, okay, 
it's pretty, it's pretty um, bold, but this is what lawyers would do. So we have to see Tertullus, Tertullus here. He's a lawyer and he's acting as a lawyer. Not that he's shrewd. He's just acting like a lawyer and maybe a little callous, but he's exercising and using what he knows. So right here by saying, examine him, knowing that there's no evidence to prove any of these things that are going to, that they're charging him, maybe by hoping that the governor and he's going to have his officials torture him and beat him. That maybe Paul give in and confess. Well, okay, I give in. You know, because he just said it by examining him then, and then you'll find out all these things. It makes no sense that he would ask him that, knowing that there is a truth to come forth and that there's nothing that they can bring out against him. But thank be to God that God, that Paul had nothing to fear, right? He answered cheerfully with confidence. He had no problem stating the truth. What was he going to say? Okay, I'm here. Um, I like what he says in verse 10, after the governor nodded for him to, to speak. I could imagine that nod because he's hearing this lawyer right here and this governor is right here. I don't know if he was sitting down, but how do you nod to someone like, like hey, or like, <laughs> he didn't do a hand gesture, he just nodded like, so I'm assuming this, okay, like, hey, I got your attention over there. And he says, and Paul answers, Knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation, I make my defense cheerfully and with good courage. As you can easily verify, it has, been up to, it has been no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. Neither in the temple nor in the synagogue or elsewhere in the city did they find me carrying on a dissension or disputing with anybody or causing a crowd to gather, nor can they present evidence to you to prove what they know, what they now bring against me. Oh, you went to 14. I went to 14? No, I didn't go to 14. Unless your, your Bible states different, but no. True. Yeah, so um, what I said I liked about that is that he, he answered because in the beginning, the opening the case, the, the, you know, the, the lawyer was saying, oh, you know, um, I have, um, since your foresight and reforms are being carried out of this nation and we have attained peace because of you. Paul also acknowledged who he is as governor and says, I know that you, you've governed and you've been a judge over this nation. So he stated a fact. He didn't flatter him. In contrast to his accusers, they flattered the governor. Paul didn't have to do that. There's nothing to do. But by doing this and being a man of a reputation in law, because Paul was a very smart man. So he knew about laws and he knew how to discuss. And knowing that Felix is also a governor, one who, who also knows the law, you could imagine that it was brought up so he can say, okay, um, I know that you've seen that these people cause a lot of trouble. And it's obvious because during his governing, governing years, this was mentioned that uh, in, in his position of experience, he had seen acts of, viol of violence that involved the Jews and the leaders. This has happened before. The Jews are not, the leaders are notorious for bringing a charge against another person to another country or to another group or another government. It happened to Jesus. We know that. They took, the religious leaders took it to somebody else. Hey, you know, th this guy's causing a, you know, an uproar. He's causing division. He has his own sect over here. He has his own followers. He's coming against you. He's not paying taxes. They accused Jesus also. And they have to go somewhere else to another government, which is like, really? You're so evil that you cannot look at your own brother and settle this in your own place that you have to bring somebody else to it. So you're going to cause lies because there's a truth and there's a following here that knows the truth. But if you go somewhere else where people are persuaded by lies and flattery and money, then yeah, people are going to go with you. That happens now with like a lot of things in life. If you, you bribe people, you get your way. And sometimes those bribes go to waste because you pay money or you bribe and then it doesn't go your way. And then you're the one who stays like this or people stay like this and they never win and they lose money because these people never cared for them. So that's one thing that we have to be watchful and careful of too, that we never fall into this place of power and position that we bribe, that we flatter, or that we desire something that we shouldn't have or is, doesn't belong to us 
especially if we're incriminating or hurting or damaging somebody else. That's not what we do. That's not what we want to do. You don't want to be known for that. I don't want to be known for that. We have to have a moral compass. We have to walk decent, upright, upright with the Lord. Because when the charge like this comes against us, all we have to do is stand and let the Lord fight for us, especially when it's coming against us and our faith. If you physically are in trouble or you cause something, then yeah, the law is going to apply. But when you have done nothing wrong and you have morally your right standing and their false accusations, then you stand and you fight. That's when we could speak up for ourselves, for our rights, for what we need to, not to prove, but to exercise what we know and be ready so that we can also cheerfully give an answer to face to face with somebody or legally in legal form. So those are like things that I'm not saying like we're facing now, but maybe we have and we face, but we need to be sure about what we're getting involved in. And here bringing a false accusation to him was, wasn't going to go far, but still, I like that Paul responded cheerfully, not with flattery because of, he mentioned his experience. So this is in a courtroom gives like if we're watching a trial, you're like, well, that's it. He, he has nothing to hide and there's no evidence. But in a courtroom, things could turn another way. We see that in trials and in real life. We see like or the jury, everything you have all everything right. And then the jury is the one who decides. And sometimes it could be unjust because of misinformation or things were handled wrong. And, and I believe that happens now. Yeah. There's, there's injustice and people do get um, falsely Falsal incriminated, abuse. accused, even in prison. And I know that the state and a lot of states do exonerate and they, they give back for the time that they were imprisoned and all that. But it shouldn't have to go that way because, well, I don't know, it's tough to go into that place, but just a lot of things to consider and to be prayer, to be in prayer about. Yeah. Be in prayer as pastor opened up that we pray for our governors, our leaders, those in position, those who make the law and those, you know, who break the law. We also pray for them because they need to get right because our lives are in, in, in that place. Yes, Sister I'm going to back up what you said about the examine mm -hmm. because in 24 of 22, it says, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging. Mm -hmm. Same thing what you said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's not just like, oh, ask him. Because you think examine and you're thinking they're going to have a conversation. Hey, let's examine the evidence. You know, let's look over. No, this is abuse. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing that we talk about this and then, like, you know, we're looking at this sense, but it also reminds me of, like, the place that we said they did that with Jesus. It's exactly what they did. They used the Roman government. Basically, they said, we, we, in our law, we cannot condemn this man to death, but you can, you know? And it just kind of reminded me, like you're talking about in this, is that it's amazing when somebody comes against you, and I'm sure we've always faced this, but it's amazing when people will come against certain people, those people now will tend to start to talk to others that they in turn would have never talked to. Yeah been a part of but because now they have that same issue with that person now they became friends because of whatever whether it's hate anger frustration whatever it is and we see that here how uh, you know jewish and the roman government were not in the same but because of this this is where you know like you see herod and and, uh, and Pilate become friends now mm -hmm. you know because they have a common enemy or a common ground and it's just like it's it's crazy how that works but that's just humanity this Pastor, was it Batman agreement. or Dick Tracy said the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Where was that from? That might have been Dick Tracy. Remember? Yeah, that's a good Same one. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, that comes to that comes to pass in reality. It's kind of a hard place. Because Brother you don't AJ know. Caesar? I think Brother AJ has Oh, yeah, you were gonna say too. something. No, about I, that? I just bring out the point. It was a point of agreement that brought them together again. Yeah. yeah. Like in anything, you, you have a certain bond when somebody agrees with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Somebody gets yeah. someone else. Yeah. It's yeah. like all of a sudden it's like all you know, all of you are like, wait, you're talking and then you, you guys like each other, but because yeah. it's just a crazy other <laughs> yeah. words. Yeah. But it's you're diluted fine. even though they think they're in agreement. It's like, wow, I guess people can make whatever they want yeah. of it in, in their own mind. Yeah. But right here, the, the fact that um, 
Paul responds and he speaks cheerfully. He's able to give his defense. Again, it seems like we just hear him going after a judge, after governor. I mean, we're going to see him later on going before Festus and then Agrippa, but he <clears throat> has to keep making his defense. And it's like, well, what, what, what is it going to take? What is it going to take? Because according to them, they made it seem like Paul single-handedly created disturbances across the Roman Empire. That's giving somebody a lot of credit, you know, but also not that it was a good thing. It's like, really, you, you would lie that much that you would say that he's causing problems all over the world. Really? <laughs> Think about like arguments that you've caused or like, or that somebody caused, did it really go global? <laughs> did it go not even national it just went in your little area right <laughs> with a family with your little group with friends it didn't go global it didn't go across the world the way they're claiming so that seems a little ridiculous like really am I going to believe that but now we can say that like are we really going to believe that because imagine being in this time <laughs> and present in this time what would we believe especially if we're afraid or you have to worry about someone watching you monitoring you and saying, oh, you're a follower, or you're in that sect, or you're a this, you're that, or you're Roman, you're, you're Hellenistic, or you're Gentile. They were already profiling and separating, so I don't think we'd really be in a safe place to say, but trusting the Lord and holding on to the truth and knowing that <coughs> what you're speaking is not a lie. It's just you're speaking something that somebody, that something hates. If they were fearing for their life. You, that's why they didn't speak up a lot, you know. Yeah. Maybe they were believers, but they wouldn't speak up because they were afraid of the of what the consequences would mm -hmm. be. Yeah. yeah. And people would know where it came from. Yes. You know, in a small town or a big town, people know who you are. People knew who people's kids were. Like, oh, aren't you so and so? Or hey, yeah. don't you live over there? They knew that. Up, they said that about Jesus. Wasn't Joseph his father? Like, just. So much back talk, back slap, gossip, and it, it wasn't nice. So right here, um, going back to like thinking about people come together for, for a cause, and it's not always good. And it made me think about like just the evil of it, the intent of it, because it's really not towards the man, but it's because of what the man represents. The, they, the leaders knew that he wasn't creating anything new or establishing something new. What is it about it that they had so much hate and so much anger? Them having the power they already did, the prestige and the, the praise and everything they wanted, what would it matter if someone's sharing about salvation, about hope, mm -hmm. about it, they're not inventing something new. It's just prophecy coming to pass. Scripture is coming to, to life. To It's happening but when a mind is deluded, when someone already has evil within, I wrote, what can an evil deluded heart do? Not deluded, but deluded. What can an evil deluded heart do? Or what is it capable of doing? Not only to itself or to others. Obviously here, these group of people that we're going to talk about, because it's it's they're the sect, they're the religious leaders, they're, they're the Sanhedrin, they're the Sadducees. They never want to be told their faults. They get offended. So they prefer to be praised. And then this makes one's heart hardened and encouraged by evil. Because you're getting your way. You're already immoral. You have no standards. You're at all costs, you'll do it. You're willing to kill people for the sake of just you looking, being respected and getting, I don't know, monetary compens or who knows what, how deep this was but they don't want to be told that they're wrong. We got to read uh, a couple of scriptures before. It's like, what, you you offend me, a high priest? You know, it's already a man with, with a high place that they get offended. Whitewash, white, white, whitewash tombs, yeah. <laughs> because of fact, and it's just a simple thing about sharing the faith. He wasn't starting a rebellion or his own government or his own clique or his own crew. He was doing what the Lord commanded to do. The Great since you, Commission. Since you brought that up, is mm -hmm. this the same Ananias that he said you're at Whitewash guy? Yes. He is the same Ananias. Yeah, it's okay. in the same, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had gave a description of three different Ananias on the, um, previously. But yeah, he's at the same one. Okay. The one right now at this console. So Paul happens to answer for himself. I love that he did. 
and I'm going to emphasize again on it, cheerfully because he answered for himself. He had nothing to hide. There is nothing to hide. What he says right here, verse 10, knowing that for many years you have been a judge, this is already him acknowledging him as governor, but not flattering him. I make my defense cheerfully and with good courage. As you can easily verify, it has been no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. Sometimes you just, you do something simple, boom, you get accused. So this is simple. He went up to worship and all this is taking place. Don't stop worshiping the Lord, okay? This is not going to take place. But right here in verse 12, neither in the temple nor in the synagogues or elsewhere in the city did they find me carrying on a discussion or disputing with anybody or causing a crowd to gather. We know that he didn't cause mm -hmm. all these things. So they cannot present evidence or prove to you what they're charging against me. Paul answered the leaders and the consul and all them would rather a mob job would have taken place. What do I say by, what do I mean by mob job? They would have, injustice, basically, you know, a mob takes over. They would rather a mob job be done than for justice to, to come forth. So they're not in a good place and they're not in a happy place. But Paul did what he was supposed to do. He stood his ground. In Isaiah 54, 17. Where? Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. 54, 17. I wrote this next to the, the sentence. Paul answers. He happens to answer for himself. So that's good. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. This peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is a heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is a vindication from me, says the Lord. So that's a good scripture to not only stand by, but to believe and acknowledge that what's going to come against you in judgment, but against because of the Lord. The Lord is the one who vindicates. He's the one that protects us. And it's not going to prosper when it's uh, reviling, when it's against him, and when it's wrongful. Because the Lord is for us. Thank God he's for us. Are you guys happy that he's for us? <laughs> Amen. So we're going to, I'm going to go into some scriptures now because I feel like I was like talking, talking, talking. But it's good stuff because you, you think it's simple or that, we, we could just read about it, but no, there's like things that make sense that we need to know that maybe we overlook or we don't consider, but like little, just simple things that are going to make a difference in our lives to be able to share for others. Like you're going to come into a place where you're going to be able to share this with somebody or have insight in how to share this or how to apply it, especially when we're being accused. You know the scripture that the Lord says that vengeance is mine. He's the one that avenges. The great avenger. No, he, he, vengeance is his. And I do have these scriptures. I don't know if I was going to think if I should read them before um, I say this. But I'm going to read these notes and then we'll go to the scripture so we can read them together and then conclude with it. So being falsely accused can be frustrating. This is a conclusion, like, it can be frustrating. It can happen from someone, Pastor, you brought it up, just people conspire because they have something in common. But it can happen from someone wrongly presuming something about you out of jealousy or hatred. This is what's taking place in the scriptures. Jealousy and hatred. But it could happen to us because people are going to presume something about us and they're going to accuse us. But we don't repay evil back with evil. We don't. We shouldn't. That's why I said, like, you just want to hold back and you're like, oh, but I'm being mistreated. Or someone, you want to stand up for somebody that's being mistreated. When it comes to someone being put down or someone being bullied or your kids or your, relative, your family, someone's being mistreated, you want to stand up. Or you want to encourage them to stand up for themselves. But the way we defend ourselves, defend our case is by speaking the truth. Continue to walk with integrity and honorably. We have a great example, and that's the Lord. He had many false accusations come also towards him. But there are certain things that he did that we maybe haven't done, but we can do. He, The way he responded to them was by asking questions. This is his ministry. This is what he did. He asked questions. He shared parables, analogies. 
He gave strong words of condemnation, of affirmation by referring to the scriptures. And that's key for us. We refer to the scriptures, especially in times like this, and by withdrawing from the accuser and keeping silent, especially if you've done nothing wrong. These are good things to do. Keep in mind. And I had said, hire an attorney, <laughs> an attorney that's going to help you fight back. And yeah, that is the Lord because he has a wise counsel, sound counsel, doctrine, and he's for us because if we are being accused of something, especially sharing our faith, this is like not criminal stuff. If you are being a it, criminal charges, take it upon with the law or someone's going to call the law upon you. But in scripture and biblically and in Christianity is we seek the Lord. Because if we offend someone or we don't know we offended someone and they now they're mad and they're bringing accusations or gossiping or backbiting or causing trouble, then we know the Lord's going to take care of it. We can bring it up. We can talk to one another. You can say, hey, something's going on. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we can make it right. But when it's out of our hands, especially something because someone knows you, you believe in Jesus or you're a Christian, you're a follower, you read the Bible, you, you go to church, or you just represent a form of life that maybe they don't understand or they don't live, the Lord is our defense. And all we have to do is just be ourselves. What can you change about yourself except just, well, if there's changes we need to do, then yeah, obviously, that those are obvious things. But in Christ, if all this is coming against us because of our faith, then we don't shrink back. Because in the verses to come, Paul's just going to confess what, what he does just because he's a believer, because he's preaching Jesus, salvation for everyone. So we know that the Lord fights for us in that, in that defense. I'm going to share some scriptures with you. And we'll read them together. So let's go to Romans 12, 19. If you get there before me, please read it. Romans 12, 19. Go ahead. Well, this is NLT. Okay. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Amen. And not in, in haste or just in anger. It's just not trusting God that he knows the matters of the heart. He knows the issues. He knows the outcome. But we, we use that for our defense. The scriptures, we search the scriptures. Romans 16, 18. I'm going to read that one. And this is contrary to, not contrary, but this is going to those who are opposing the accusers. For such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and base desires. By smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting, the innocent, and the naive. I'm not saying we're, in a, we're naive, but I'm, this is just, Wow. When they're not serving the Lord, when they don't know who they serve or their priorities are wrong, they, they're serving themselves. And in this scripture, the scriptures that we're reading, it's a group of those who are opposing the truth. Do you want to say something, Pastor? Mm -hmm. oh, so it's, they're not serving God. They're, God is not in their mind. It's their desires. It's their flattery. It's, the law, it's their law, what they want to take place. Proverbs 2019. He who goes about as a gossip reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossip who talks freely or flatters. So going back to that same scripture, it's like, okay, don't associate yourself with that. Because flattery is not going to get you very far or in a good place. But what we do have is, is confidence in God. First Peter 3.16 
And I'm pretty sure we have scriptures in mind about what the warnings and the dangers of, of flattery and speaking evil. Definitely like go to them. First Peter 3.16. And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear, so that every time you are slandered or falsely accused, those who attack or disparage you, your good behavior in Christ will be shamed by their own words. Description. Amen. Amen. And that's our defense. We see it, we see to it that our conscience is clean, that it's pure, that we're in a right standing with the Lord. Because those words are just going to be their own. But to have the confidence in the Lord, it's, it's a good place to be in, to stand in confidence with the Lord. And we do what's right. We do what's right and not do what, what we shouldn't do. Why? That sounded too, um, too easy, right? Do what's right and don't do what you shouldn't do. <laughs> First Peter 2.19 talks about that. So I'm going to read it so it doesn't sound like I just cut it. 2.19. First Peter? Yes. I wonder if I got that one. Let me see. For it defines people who first Peter 2.19. On my notes, I wrote, do what is right, but it doesn't seem like it is. Um... Okay. For this finds favor. If a person endures the sorrow of suffering unjustly because of an awareness of the will of God. <clears throat> okay. If a person endures the sorrow of suffering unjustly because of the awareness of the will of God. In this, I, I, I added, continue to do what is right. Because if you find yourself in this place, continue to trust and do what is right in the sight of the Lord. And there's other scriptures that I want to share. But then we'd be going through the whole, I would say 50% of the Bible. You guys want to stay? Do an all-nighter? <laughs> uh, I also wrote scriptures that uh, that made me think about what the religious religious leaders did where they were standing did they forget did they forget the law did they forget the truth and what they should represent especially believing in god and saying that the father abraham and you know all the laws and all that did they forget really or what happened that they got confused did they stop waiting do they just hate everybody i mean they did it to the lord jesus to his face where they not only accused him they tried to kill him and what happened, they took it to another government so they can go on and take his life. But that had to be fulfilled so that now we can know the truth. So that now that we have the hope of salvation, of a hope and a future, and we are responsible now and have that good news to be able to share with others, to share with one another the good news of, of the gospel, to share salvation, the hope that is in Christ, mm -hmm. to know that there is forgiveness of sin when we come to the Lord and ask him for forgiveness and seek him. To know that we can pray and we can seek and we can also forgive our those who sin against us. Because that's one thing we do. We we don't take the law or evil and, and pay evil for evil. We, we don't do that. But I believe that when you're already focused on something else, the way the religious leaders here work and everybody who works in falsehood and lies, and for their own pleasure, their own, their own gain, which has happened in the beginning from previous judges and kings, that that takes place. They do it for self, not counting the cost for the people. It's rare that a lot that a governor or a leader or a king would care for people. But we know in scripture and the truth and our faith that we have one who does, an advocate, the one who paid the price. He laid down his life and once and for all, he did it that one time. He suffered through it. That we know as example, but he did it for us. He did it for Jerusalem. He did it for the Jews. And we are grafted in now as believers and we benefit from that. So this, this isn't to put them to shame because they're not believing and they're rejecting because there's still hope. There's still hope for a, a non-believer. There's still hope for a confused individual. There's still hope for one who's coming against the will of God, we can pray, but the time could be cut short. So we, we don't know how long we have, but we can pray, intercede on their behalf, intercede for one another because we do have something that's good. We don't have to be in a place where we 
testify falsely against our neighbors. In Exodus 26 and in Exodus 23, 1, it talks about that. Don't testify falsely against your neighbor. Don't spread rumors. Don't slander. Those are things that we should not do. And as believers, we should not even consider doing that. Deuteronomy 5.20, I'm going to go to that one. The other ones were just for notes, but they're, they're effective, okay? <laughs> Don't disregard them. Deuteronomy 5.20, and I will be closing soon. 5.20. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. Yes, we shouldn't. And that's a command from the Lord. I'm going to read how I have it here. You shall not give false testimony that is a lie, withhold, or manipulate the truth against your neighbor or any person. That's word for us to not only remember that, but to, to exercise it. Let's not give a dishonest testimony. Because the godless destroys and we're not godless. We have the Lord, and we shouldn't act shameful or disgraceful that way. Because, again, it's, it's not something that we're going to do. It's important to, to take its steps, to walk in, the, in a right way, the path of the Lord, seek his counsel, because we know that, you know, that God's sovereign, and he's in control. And when you, your faith is in him, I think that should be enough for us to do, just to have that confidence that our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are times that we do have to stand and we do have to speak back, but we do it with truth, with nothing to hide. No hidden motives, no intent, but just with truth. There's a scripture in Matthew. You guys want to guess it for me? Talking about Guess who's blessed when they're persecuted? When they revile you? Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to close with that one and I didn't write it in my notes, but it's Matthew. Okay, Bible scholars. Come on, come on. Matthew what? 522 maybe? Ah, I didn't write it down. And that's the one I'm going to close with. Yeah? So it's 522 maybe? <laughs> it's in the Bible. It is. <laughs> Bless are the poor spirit. Bless are those. We know those. The Beatitudes. 511. Amen. Yay. It's 11? Yes. 511. Blessed, morally courageous, and spiritually alive with life and joy in God's goodness are you. I'm going to read that again. Okay. Blessed morally courageous and spiritually alive with life, joy, and God's goodness. Are you when people insult, 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 and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of your association with me? Be glad. Be glad and exceedingly joyful for your reward in heaven is great. Absolutely exhaustible. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's verse 12. That, that scripture should bring joy to our heart. Just a peace of mind. Because the Lord is the one who created all. And he is sovereign. And he gives us a peace that we need. And he is a help in our time of need. At all times, actually. Because we're in him and he's with us. So it's like, Lord, if someone's going to bring a case against me, let me be right. So that I can give a cheerful response, that I can be confident that there's no charge, but I could just stand and take it, not take it like, you know, take a beating, but willingly be ready because we, we just don't know, especially I'm gonna say in these times, you just don't know when someone will come against you, but we're in the Lord and we trust him. And if they're coming against us, and the Lord says, because of me, so because of our faith in him, then we should have a greater confidence that the Lord is with us, and he fights for us. And he's our protector and our defender. He's our shield, our strong tower, our refuge. He is everything that we need. But it's important that, yeah, you're going to get lawyered up? Yeah, call Jesus. <laughs> his defense, his counsel. That's good. Because he <laughs> has the right words for us. So don't, don't look at those signs on the street like, call these lawyers. No. 
the best attorney that can help you is the Lord, the counselor, the great counselor, the mighty counselor, the prince of peace, Amen. the one who rules justly and the one who reigns forever, not just in our mind, but in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Amen. Is that good news? Amen. That God is in control. He's sovereign and he's in control. And not only that, he's close and personal. So that we take with us that he is that close and personal to us. Don't, don't call sweet James. No, call don't, don't call Jesus. James. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> if you've been in an accident, don't call them. <laughs> no, well, legally, yes. But yes. in the Lord, he's our defense. And yes. we give that defense cheerfully. Amen. God bless you. If you have any more questions, Pastor will come up and he'll take the hit for me. God bless you. Thank you. Very good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We clap. We clap. Amen. God's word is good. Amen. Very good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Amen. Uh, that's, there's just so much in that. I mean, my head's kind of like this right now because there's just so many different areas. There was a lot there. Huh? There was a lot there. Yeah, there's, a, there's so much in there, you know, and, and uh, that really just um, really opened up my eyes to a lot of different things that I have to just sit and ponder. There's, there's a lot in there because, you know, many times, like I said, we look at the book, you know, we look at uh, the, what we're reading and we hear about the Jewish people and all of that, but Remember that the writings in the Bible are for we today as a church to make sure that we don't fall into that area, that we don't fall into this place. And so therefore, we as a church have a responsibility not to fall into the same mistakes that the Jewish people fell into. And we're able to learn from that, you know, and in our own personal lives, but also together corporately, you know, so we need to be careful in these areas. So that's where I always look at it in our sense. You know, we're not looking here and pointing at the Jewish people, it's like, no, we have to be able to see ourselves that we don't fall into these places. And when we have or where we have, we need to repent of it and ask the Lord to help us to see through it so we don't follow these same patterns and footsteps that many times we do. So it's just really, really, you know, encouraging in, in hearing this word and to be these truths being brought out because, again, it's very timely. So thank you for bringing forth the word tonight. And, and definitely I am cheerful. We can be cheerful because, you know, it's, it's one of the greatest things is that when you have nothing to hide, it's like we can have a cheerful defense because it's like I have nothing to hide, you know. And, and that is a beautiful thing because it reminds me of the, of, the, of the service on Sunday, you know, how's a relationship, you know. And one of the things that brought to, brings to mind is when somebody has something on you, it's like, you know, it's like they have a power over you, right? But when you know you're good with God, it's like, yeah, you may have that on me, but he already knows. I already came to him. <laughs> There's nothing hidden. I've already confessed my sin to God, you know. So with that, you've already disarmed the enemy. Amen. You've disarmed the powers. You know, you've disarmed those principalities because you're in good with God. It's like, God, I've already come to you. Amen. And, you know, you said something. You, you, you miss said it. You know, you corrected yourself. But I, I believe that was purposely because, you know, like she said, you get lawyered up. You know, but she said liared. Oh, you did. Yeah. So I thought about it. I was like, yeah, so you could either get lawyered up or you could get liared up. So, you know, and in this case, we saw they got liared up, you know, because as they were using. So there's two ways of going. You know, there's nothing is lawyers. We know that there's a lot of good lawyers, but, you know, you also got the better call Saul's out there. Right. So if you haven't seen that, you know, it's. It's a, it's a shady area, right? So I like that. It was like, oh, you could get lawyered up or we could choose to get liared up. Which one are we going to do, you know, right? But no matter what is out there against me and you, we have the advocate. We have the intercessor. We have Jesus Christ. So she read a scripture here, and I just wanted to read this here. It's, she brought it up in, in Romans, and it says, For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That is Romans 16, 18 through 20. Yeah, she read that one earlier, and I just kept reading. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So... We can be cheerful knowing that we have nothing to hide. It's open and laid bare before Christ and just continue to stand in that right standing relationship, knowing that we have the intercessor, the great advocate, Jesus Christ on our side. 16, 16 is Romans 16, verse 18 through 20. 
you know, but like she said, there's a lot of scripture in there. I encourage you to read the whole chapter. There's a lot more in there. Amen. So it's, it's definitely a lot to ponder tonight. And I'm just grateful and I'm looking forward to next week as well as we continue in this. So just continue. Let's continue to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for the word this this night and the teaching. Amen. And uh, this night, if we have any prayer requests, we're going to lift up Brother Steve. Um, his father was in the hospital. He had a fall this week, uh, this past week. So um, I know he's praying for salvation for him and for healing for his hip. Um, yeah, so um, his father's in Vegas right now. That's where he gets his stage. But, you know, he was asking for prayer. So we're going to lift him up in prayer. And does any other prayer requests tonight? And for those watching with us online as well, feel free to just, you know, bring them forth tonight as we pray before the Lord. Any other prayer requests tonight? My husband's going to have a colonoscopy. Colonoscopy? Okay. So he's in that terrible time right now of drinking all the juice and Ooh, food. Okay. So okay. We'll, we'll lift them up, definitely. Amen. Anybody <laughs> else? Anybody <laughs> else? That is right now. All right. His name's Joe. Joe. Okay. We'll lift up Joe as well. Amen. Well, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, tonight, my God, as we Father God, are able to rejoice, my God, and Lord, we are able to stand in that place as Paul did to be able to have a cheerful defense, my God, because Father God, you are our advocate, you are intercessor, Lord Jesus, and you are the one, my God, that stands in the gap between us and the heavenly Father, and we thank you today, Lord Jesus, because you are the righteous judge, Lord, and you do judge righteously, but Father, because of that blood that your son shed for us today, Lord God, we are grateful today, Lord, that we are able to have a right standing, justified relationship in him today. And because of that, Lord Jesus, we are righteous in you today, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that we could come to you every day, every moment of our day, and we can confess our sins to you, Lord, that there will be nothing hidden within our hearts and our minds, anything that can cause shame or guilt or condemnation, Lord. And though those things, Lord, Father God, we have conviction. And though, my God, there is discipline, my God. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to stay in a place of condemnation or guilt or shame or separation from you, Lord God. Because, Father, we are free to come to you, Lord, and confess our sins and make sure that we are in a right standing relationship with you, Lord. And Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, Lord, through your word tonight, my God, there are so many things that you brought to the light, Lord God. Father, just as us and the responsibilities of ourselves as a church, Lord God, in so many areas that maybe we have also fallen into and that are guilty of, Lord. But Father, tonight, in Jesus' name, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that we as your church, as your bride, would be open, Lord Jesus, to allow your light, my God, to bring forth these areas, Lord God, that need repentance, that we need forgiveness, that we need restoration, that we need healing, my God, and that we need to be brought back into order, my Lord. So, Father, tonight in Jesus' name, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. We acknowledge, my God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, in any area that we ourselves have used the world, Father God, for our own benefit and agenda, Lord, not your, not your religious actions, Lord Jesus, but our own, Lord, the, the, the agendas of man, my God. But Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we repent of our ways. We repent in our own lives, Father God, for using persons or people around us, my God, for our own benefit, my God, Lord Jesus, Father, to get our way or to prove ourselves right or to come against anyone, especially brothers and sisters in the faith or family or friends. Forgive us today, Lord God. Because, Lord Jesus, Lord, this only causes division and disunity, Lord God, within the church and within our homes and within our families today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, help us to see these areas within our own lives and our own hearts. And, Lord God, within the church today. And, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father God, we just acknowledge these areas today, Lord God, because, Father God, we can all be found guilty of these things in certain areas and certain places, my God. 
but we repent in Jesus' name. We ask you to forgive us, Lord God. We confess these sins to you tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. And Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, in that place, we also forgive those today, Lord God, that we have been holding anything against today, Lord God. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, Lord, we don't want to hold anything against anyone, Lord God, because as you have been merciful to us, you have commanded us to show that same mercy, Lord God. So tonight, in Jesus' name, according to your word, in obedience, and because we are in a right-standing relationship with you, Father, we forgive in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God, because you are a defender, Lord. You are the one, my God, that stands in the gap. You are the one that intercedes for us. You are the one that died for our sins. And it's only because of your righteousness that we are justified today, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for that firm foundation, for the firm foundation of your word. And we thank you tonight in Jesus' name for the freedom that we have in you, Lord God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we are come to you this night without hindrance, without, Father God, disunity, without, Father God, discord, Lord. We come today in confidence and boldness in your mercy and grace. Lord, knowing that you hear us, but not only do you hear us, but you answer us according to your word, my God. And Father, tonight in Jesus' name, we cast our cares upon you, for you care for us, Lord. Your word says you did not give us, Father, a spirit of fear, timidity, but a power of love and of a sound mind and discipline. Lord, your word says, do not be anxious for anything, but by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving to make our requests known to you. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in you, our Christ Jesus. So, Father, today in Jesus' name, we thank you that we can believe and trust in your word, my God. So, therefore, tonight, as we come to you today, we lift up Father Joe to you, Lord. As Father God, he prepares for this procedure, my God. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name for strength. And, and Father God, Lord Jesus, just comfort, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, just for that, that endurance that he needs, Father, to follow all these procedures for it. But Lord, in Jesus' name, we are believing for a good report. A good report. We are asking you, Lord, in Jesus' name, my God, that Lord, he yes. would just see your glory, my God. And that, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, though he may be anxious and though he may be concerned, Lord, because, Lord, that is not an easy place to be in, my God. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your peace through it over our sister, Lord, as she's trusting you. And we're just believing and thanking you right now for the good report in the name of Jesus, Lord. And in that, Father God, that that peace, Lord Jesus, would just bring about such a joy. We lift up Steve's request for his father. Yes. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your healing upon his dad tonight. Yes. We thank you for a full recovery. Lord. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we come in agreement with our brother, Lord, yes. for salvation for his father today, for his dad. Yes. Lord, he is believing and praying for his dad and his family, Lord, yes. to come you, Lord. to you, to confess you as Lord and yes. to know yes. you, yes. Lord. And Father, that you would know them, Lord God, because you know where they're at today. So Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we thank you tonight that we come together in faith. And Lord, we just stand believing, Lord God, because we know that all things are possible for you, Lord. And Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, our brother will see your glory as his dad and his family come to you to know you, Lord. And Father, tonight, in Jesus' name, Lord, we lift up everyone here tonight, and those watching with us, Father God, and all those today, and, our, and the brothers and sisters, Lord, that yes. Father God have been in a place, Lord, where so many have come against yes. them, false accusations, or maybe just accusations, or people talking about them, or Father God coming together against one another, Lord. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, you, we come to you tonight, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. We ask you for strength and peace and comfort, Lord. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we are reminded tonight, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yes, yes. 
For we shall refute every tongue that rises itself against us. For this is the heritage, Father God, of your servants, Lord, and the vindication from you, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to bring to light what has been done in the darkness. What has been spoken, Lord Jesus, in the darkness, bring forth to the light, Lord Jesus. Because, Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that, Lord Jesus, those will eventually come out for the lives that they are, Lord God. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we trust you today, Lord. And, Father, it can be overwhelming, Lord. It can be tiring, Lord Jesus. It can weigh down, Lord Jesus. Because, Father, in the name of Jesus, it's a heavy weight. But, Lord, thank you for your refreshing tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we could be cheerful, Lord, because we know that there is nothing to hide. And, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, even in the areas that we do falter, Lord, we are able to come to you and bring those things to you, Lord. So, Father, in that, Lord, Lord, it no longer has any power over us, Lord. The accuser is the accuser of the brethren. Yep. But, Lord Jesus, you are our advocate, Lord. Amen. Jesus, you are our defender. Yes. And in you, we have the freedom yes. and the victory. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. So thank you tonight, Lord, yes. for that liberty and that freedom we have in you. Yes, as we stand together, trust in you, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up every prayer and supplication unto you tonight. And we leave it in your hands, Lord. And we thank you, Father, as we rejoice in you. So thank you for this time together tonight. Thank you for your word, for falling on good ground. Yes. Thank you for you bringing forth the understanding. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your interpretation of your word, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We praise you and we glorify you. And we ask you to take us home safely tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, if you were able to join us on Friday night for prayer, feel free to do so here. If not, we encourage you to pray with us throughout the day or at, you know, at home at night or whenever you get a chance throughout the day on Friday. We'll be seeking the Lord just as we did tonight as we closed up. This is just preparation for the Friday nights. Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. And I believe it was chapter two, <laughs> verse two, one and two, one. right? Verse one, two, two. Amen. But that whole chapter is good. Amen. So we'll start there and see as the Lord leads us that night. Amen. Amen.